Chapter 4, Withholdings. If we go now to Payroll and Maintenance, this is where we maintain the payroll software. Notice on the left, you see the items that we're going to maintain. We're going to start with Withholdings. The withholding form opens and you'll see listed here all of the preset withholdings already available in your software. Notice that you already have Ohio Income Tax, Federal, Medicare, Social Security, and on down the list. You would never add an additional Medicare or an additional Social Security. These, these preset withholdings are the ones that are going to pull into the tax reports. If you add something other than what's here, it's not going to pull into the tax reports correctly. So this list is the basic list that everybody pulls from. In your entity, you might have other items. You might have a local tax. You might withhold insurance. Uh, you might have garnishments or um, other items like child support. So whatever you see listed is the default. But keep in mind, your software is not automatically updated for uh, withholdings. The only thing that's updated by UAN are the tax tables for state and federal taxes. Medicare, Social Security, OPRS, OPF, they are all going to be managed by you. So let's take a look at one of those just for uh, your own purposes. You must understand that these are not automatically updated. Uh, take a look at the OPNFPF for fire. Click edit and for those of you that have OP and FPF you can see the employee and employer rates. You can tell that these are not the correct rates. The employee share went up in uh, July of 2013. So on your computer the previous user or if you've never been in payroll may not have updated that to the correct rate. You need to edit these and make sure that the correct employee and employer share is entered in these boxes for rates. Once you edit the rate to the correct rate, you would click Save and Close, and then from that point forward, everybody that you add the withholding to would have the correct rate. If you have any question about what the correct rates are, you must contact uh, the entity that you're dealing with. So if it's OPRS, call OPRS, OPNF, call OPNF. And uh, Medicare and Social Security are handled by the federal government. Um, again, make sure your rates are correct before you start adding these to employees. So that will be one of the things you'll want to do is edit all of those preset withholdings uh, from Medicare down the list to make sure that they have the correct employee and employer share. Supplemental state and supplemental federal withholding are listed here and those only should be used as uh, a supplemental withholding. A lot of people like to withhold extra state or extra federal and the software has those automatically created for you. Do not create additional or different types of federal or state supplemental withholdings that um, you're going to use for tax purposes because these are the only ones that are going to pull into the tax reports. We'll cover that further uh, when we get to the employees. Notice um, your, your uh, tax base may include a local tax that you need to withhold. And our example on page 8 is adding a new withholding. So if you see uh, that this list is not the complete list of withholdings that you need and you need to add your local taxes, our example is uh, Buckeye Village Income Tax. So we would need to click the Add button. And we'll cover the, before we start the exercise on page 8, uh, we'll cover what a withholding is. Um, no, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and just do the exercise so that you can see it all the way through before we talk about it. Uh, Buckeye Village Income Tax is our withholding name. Give it a specific name. From the drop-down list, we have to choose a process group. Now this one's simple. It's a local tax. I'm going to choose local tax. We'll cover the other ones in just a moment. When you select local tax, the details tab at the bottom uh, changes for local tax types. We now need to choose a payee. Oh, I throw Bob because each day I switch it. <laughs> From the drop down list, choose our vendor payee that we had it for Buckeye Village Income Tax Department. And that's who the withholding payment is going to go to. Now on the details tab, notice we have a W-2, 
abbreviation. So what that means is whatever you type in this box is what's going to appear as the description for this tax on the W-2. And we're going to type in Buckeye in capital letters. Now we want the rate to be applied. So our Buckeye Village Income Tax example is a 1% tax. So we're going to mark the rate and put the 1% in the box. Okay, notice on the far right the earnings that this tax is going to be applied to. That is an information area only. You can't uncheck any of those items. And what I want you to be aware of is when you choose, when you add Buckeye Village income tax as a withholding, it's going to take Buckeye Village tax from all of these earnings types. Notice that a non-taxable earning is still going to have Buckeye Village income tax taken from it. The non-taxable non-state retirement earning is still going to have Buckeye Village income tax taken from it. So what you need to understand is you don't want to use payroll for items that are not payroll related because even though something would be non-taxable for state and federal purposes, it might be taxable for the local tax and school tax purposes. If it doesn't belong in payroll, pay it from accounting. And we don't know the answer to whether it belongs in payroll. You would need to consult a tax um, authority, either the IRS or the state, or uh, your local taxes to determine whether an item should belong in payroll. We can tell you how to set it up once you know what to do with it. Bob's going to go ahead and save and close this item. And uh, we've got some people that have garnishments and child support and you might have a cafeteria plan insurance or you might not have a cafeteria plan insurance but you, your employees pay a percentage of their health insurance. Let's take a look at what these different adding withholdings will look like. We'll click the add button and let's leave the name blank for now because we're not really going to add one. We're going to show you the different types. Cafeteria plans. You need to be really careful with this. A cafeteria plan is a legislated pre-tax insurance plan. So if you don't have the legislation to back up that it is a cafeteria plan type for uh, federal tax purposes, don't choose cafeteria plan. The fiscal officer cannot choose to make it a uh, cafeteria plan. It's got to be legislated locally. If you have any questions about whether your uh, insurance qualifies as a cafeteria plan, you would need to consult your legislation, talk to your uh, law director or solicitor, and possibly contact the IRS. Don't use cafeteria plan unless you've got the legislation to back it up. Uh, notice if you choose cafeteria plan types, it, it's going to look the same as if you choose the other withholding types. Uh, if you choose miscellaneous union withholdings, you still have it looks the same, but it's going to tax differently. So you need to understand whether you qualify. We can't tell you that. You've got to research and determine. So if your health insurance does qualify as a cafeteria plan, when you're setting up the insurance withholding from the employee, you need to set it up as a cafeteria plan. It will behave differently when, it ta when you get to the tax on the wages. But if it's not a cafeteria plan, your health insurance withholdings, dental insurance, life insurance, um, AFLAC, things that are not cafeteria plan would be added as a miscellaneous or union type withholding. So it looks the same, but it taxes differently. Notice that you still choose the vendor pay or the payee, it looks like here, but it's your vendor payee list. So you had to have created those. The uh, miscellaneous union withholding uh, process group is going to be used for any withholding that you don't see listed here. So if you have a court order for a withholding from a person's uh, wages and it's not something listed there, you're going to be choosing the miscellaneous type. The vendor payees need to be added. Uh, you're going to be adding the uh, employee share amount. Uh, let's say, for example, that this is your health insurance deduction, but you have um, some people have family coverage and some people have single coverage. You can have one withholding set to the amount, but leave the amount zero. 
and when you attach it to the employee you put in the correct amount for that employee you don't need to have two separate withholdings one marked family insurance and one marked um, as uh, single insurance you would just say the withholding is a health insurance you would choose the correct process group uh, select the correct payee and notice from our drop down list we would choose that great health insurance company that's who we send the money to and then uh, put in the amount at zero because different employees withhold at different amounts so the the default that you want to set up in here is what a brand new employee would have withheld from their paycheck and if that's going to be different for different employees default the amount is zero and set it when you attach it to the employee have I forgotten anything Bob notice that oh, deferred withholdings if somebody's uh, withholding for deferred compensation it's very simple don't use it for something that it doesn't belong to make sure that uh, if somebody's withholding for deferred compensation that you use deferred compensation for that school tax is very simple just like um, just like a, a uh, local tax school tax is going to have its own settings you would choose the correct payee vendor payee to go with the school tax and notice that some of you have more than one school tax in your employee base if you have the East School District uh, that some people live in and they pay the East School District tax and some people live in the West School District tax you need to have two separate withholdings even if they withhold at the same rate because this is going to pull into the W-2 you don't want it pulling into one school district it has to be separated on the W-2 so if I have a withholding base for my employees that includes two different school districts because they live in school districts uh, separate then I'm going to have one vendor payee the Ohio school district income tax but I'm going to have two separate withholdings one for each school district and we'll see that later in our um, setup okay go ahead and close and once you have created all of the withholdings that your entire employee base uh, will use you are finished with withholdings now to see a report of your withholdings uh, go ahead and close out here payroll reports and statements and notice entity reports under entity reports you're going to see the withholding report this is going to give you your list of withholdings that are set up in the software the other withholding reports that you see at the bottom of the function list those are withholdings that are withheld from people's paychecks and when you're setting up the software those those don't have anything in them yet so when we want a report of the withholdings that we've set up we look at the the entity reports and withholding reports and that completes uh, the chapter four